Okay, we're going to start forming our shield boss. Um, this might be your first foray into metalworking. It was one of the first things I did. Um, don't be intimidated. Uh, I do it in kind of a hack way. Um, it's not the professional way at all. Um, but it works, and it should hopefully work well for you. So the first thing we're going to need are, um, excuse me, is some sheet metal. This is I've actually chosen aluminum that is 0 0.025 inches thick. That's in inches. Um, or 25 gauge metal. This is an 8 by 24 sheet uh, that I'm going to be using. As I said in a previous video, I need 8 inches because I need to fill a 6 inch hole uh, and have a lip around the outside with which to rivet it to the shield. So you need to start with the sheet metal. I found this at Tractor Supply Company. Uh, you could probably also find it wherever they sell some welding supplies. Um, it's just basic sheet stock. Um, but you can, might also find it in a hardware store, maybe at a Home Depot or a Lowe's or something like that. Um, it's not that expensive. I think this was $8 for the sheet. So it's more expensive than possibly a larger piece. But uh, for what it is, um, not a bad price, I guess. Uh, but the aluminum is light, it's nice and soft, so it'll be easy to work with for you. And um, the thin, uh, thick, the really thin thickness might be an issue, uh, simply because we're going to be stretching it quite a bit. And as we're hammering on it, we're actually stretching the metal out. And if it gets too thin, I might punch through it with a hammer. But uh, we'll see. I'm going to try with this thickness, and if I have to, I can move up or switch to steel. So stay tuned for that. Um, so the first thing I need to do is cut out an 8 inch disc as you can see here out of the same stuff very lightweight um, very shiny Ooh. Um, but that's going to be our shield boss and basically we're going to do a process called dishing which is hammering this typically into what's a dishing stump where it's a, it's a uh, even just a tree stump that has just a, a deformation similar to a bowl or you know a dish and you just hammer the metal into that um, as you see fit. And we do not have a dishing stump, and I assume you don't. And since you might not do metalworking a lot, I'm not going to go through building a, a, a dishing stump. Instead, we're going to use a roll of duct tape. Seems kind of cheesy, I know. But here's the deal. Because it has this void in the middle, you can place the metal on top and hammer on it, and you'll actually make it into a dish. It's the really cheap and easy way of doing it. Um, you can actually see where I've kind of torn into the duct tape. And of course, you can, you can still use the duct tape afterwards. Um, it looks a little rough around the edges, of course, but um, like I said, this is the easiest way of doing it, and you kind of have to move the whole thing around. This is not um, big enough, really, to be ideal, but it'll work. Um, one thing I should have mentioned is to cut this out, you're going to need a pair of pen snips or metal snips, metal shears, uh, which I have here that you can see. And that's for cutting out the metal, or really any metal, up to a pretty good thickness. I think it, some of them go up to 12 gauge, uh, 14 gauge um, metal. But uh, yeah, so as far as dishing goes, we just have the aluminum and you're just going to put it on top of here and we're going to use a ball peen hammer of a regular size, not too tiny right here, this is a 16 ounce that I just bought at the hardware store it's a peened hammer because of this, it doesn't have a claw on the back um, and that's what we're just going to use because of the round edge you can kind of make the rounding and dishing a little bit easier but you can also use the front side so that's that um, we're just going to be, again, just using that as the void. You could make your own void, as a matter of fact, if you just had a wood plank that had some significant thickness to it. So if it was like a 2x4, you know, like excuse me, a 2 inch thick piece, but like a 2 by, I guess it'd have to be a 2 by 8 or bigger. Or if you glued some planks together, um, technically you could do it in the void of your shield, and that would be a big enough void. Um, but don't beat on your shield with a hammer. Um, I know it's a shield, but it probably will not end well if you try and dish into the void of your shield. No, no. So, roll of duct tape, 
cut your own void out of a piece of 2x8 or bigger for this case because I'm using a 6 inch void. Um, you just have to cut a 6 inch circle, circle out of that plank and you will have a dishing void instead of a dishing stump. And then I will get into in just a moment um, the actual dishing itself. So actually dishing the shield boss um, I think is best done while you're sitting down and I'm actually going to use, don't get nervous here, I'm switching out my duct tape roll with the top end of a sink insert. Same size, don't don't feel like I'm cheating you here and not using something I said to use. Um, so I'm just going to use this so it holds up a little bit better than the tape. Um, and I don't wreck another roll of tape. Um, but I'm also working on a stump. Obviously there's no dishing stump in here, but this helps um, kind of deaden the noise of banging on the metal for one and two, um, reduces the shock absorbed to the floor just because nothing really likes to get hit a lot. The other thing I should have uh, mentioned earlier is that a metal file is always handy to kind of keep a file, um, excuse me, to file down the edges of your work so that you don't cut your fingers. Gloves are always a good idea, especially when working with metal and with metal this thin. Your likelihood of getting cut is very high. Please keep that in mind. Um, so definitely a file to keep your edges a little bit smoother will decrease your chance of getting cut, but I do recommend wearing gloves, even though you don't see any on my hands now. Please understand that this is a risky thing, and please wear gloves or protect yourself any way you can. So moving on, the first thing that we want to do is kind of find our center, and we want to make sure that we've marked our lip. I've done it in pencil, so you can't really see it, but you want to make sure you mark your one-inch lip all the way around. And once you have your center marked, we can get going. Now this is going to get very noisy. So again, on a safety note, you're probably going to want to wear some kind of uh, goggles. Uh, not goggles. Uh, goggles might be a good idea, although I don't anticipate any metal flying. Um, but earmuffs or earplugs of some kind, just because it's a repetitive and fairly loud noise that you're going to be creating. Also, try and keep it away from family members, neighbors, uh, loved ones it kind of gets annoying to them as well. So once you're all by yourself out in the middle of the woods and wearing gloves and safety goggles and all sorts of safety equipment, we can start dishing. And again, we have our middle, our center of our disc, and we have our void that we're going to be using. Try and line those up as best as you can. And then all you're going to be doing is kind of working your way around, as I'll show you here in a second, starting from the center and kind of rotating your way out. You're going to have to rotate this whole thing as you go. Um, and you're always going to be wanting to hit close to the center of your void. So you always want to be tapping here for the most part for this and moving your workpiece around. So um, this might get a little loud for even the camera, but we're going to start going here. And So, the first thing you're probably going to notice is the fact that it, the metal, even at this thin, is crinkling up on me. Now that's just going to happen, um, and while you're working, you just want to be able to kind of hammer those back out. Again, you're stretching the metal as you're beating on it, um, so you either just want a plank or something nearby with a flat edge that you can kind of just knock the wrinkles back out. and then continue dishing. It's kind of a work as you go. You're gonna to have to smooth out the metal, make sure that you're maintaining your lip, um, and again, working around from the center out and really moving your workpiece more than you're moving uh, your hammer. You kind of want to be hitting towards the center of the void all the time. So it's just kind of a constant back and forth. If it wrinkles up too bad, hammer out the, the crinkles and keep working.
the other thing I should make note of is the fact that um, you can see I'm primarily using the flat end of the hammer right now because I'm just trying to force the metal to stretch out uh, and get a dome. Um, and we don't really need to use the rounded edge. So if you wanted to get started on this but haven't picked up or don't have a peened hammer yet, you can go ahead and start with just a regular claw hammer. Same size as this, basically. Um, start working on it. Um, remember, if you don't own any of these tools, see if any of your neighbors or a friend or a friend's dad or somebody has uh, one of them that you can borrow, uh, if, especially if you're not going to do this a whole lot. So one last thing that I wanted to mention is that you're going to have the best luck probably working in a spiral pattern coming from the inside out because you're working with such a, uh, a smaller void than what you need for your actual boss. Um, what you're going to run into is you're actually going to start um, backtracking by trying to hammer in the middle and if you move to the outside um, you'd be moving the indentations the wrong way. So it's best to stretch the entire thing from the center out that I've discovered. So, as I said, you know, just start from the center and kind of move your piece and a spiral to the outside, flatten around your edges if you need to, uh, and then keep working. And you can already see I'm starting to develop um, a dish shape. Of course, I'm dishing mostly the entire thing at this point. I'm going to have to hammer my edges flat. Uh, but so far, so good with the, um, you know, the metal not tearing, which I was pretty confident about at this point. I don't know if we're going to get to an inch and a half without tearing, but we will see. All right, so you can kind of see how it goes. Um, I'm going to keep going until I get um, deep enough as I need to. Um, I'm getting to a point where I'm going to have to start flipping this over and flattening my outer rim. Um, I can still barely see the pencil marks here. I might have to remark those or mark it every so often. Um, but at some point you can see I've got a pretty significant dish right now. Um, but I certainly want to keep going because when I flatten these edges, of course, the actual dish is not as significant.